Sabina Juniper. Now, I can remember us talking about this at in your garden, and I think there's a really nice tree in this. I know that doesn't look like there's an awful lot of foliage on it, but you can make rather nice tiered foliage pads just like so right um it needs cleaning up first so some yeah. of this older foliage in here which is going to come off um fairly easy just nip that off um and we'll get this lot kind of just slightly pinched back sabina's um they don't, they're, they're, they're not like chinensis, even though they have scale foliage, right? They don't like to get too dry. Right. Right. Um, they do like, I mean, you don't want to keep them soaking wet either. They'll put up with a lot of cold because of where they come from. I mean, people think they're going to be really kind of like heat loving. They do quite like extremes. But one of the things with them is, is you do need to keep rejuvenating them all the time. So a lot of the stuff in here needs to be pruned back. And this crotch growth, in, this needs to be encouraged to get tighter growth a little bit later on. Right, so you don't want to be taking out any of your crotch growth. That is what we're going to be building some of the density of the foliage pads a little bit later on. So, um, right now... We'll have a turntable. Look this it's not the best, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just having a look to see which is the best front. Now, one of the key things with a, a juniper or a yew or anything that has um, live, distinctive live veins and dead wood, it is important that the live vein is visible generally from the front of the We've tree. We've just been on about this because I've always thought... Of that was the front. What, to me? Or, yeah, or, or, to or you. you. Right, right. And then Jimmy said it was coming from that side. And I think it makes sense because you've got this for a bit of depth as well. Yeah, I mean, and you see a live vein and you've got also got this nice yeah. twist in here that's more visible yeah. from this. Um, so, and this bit of dead wood's rather nice. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's actually rather a nice piece of material when it's in it when it's built up now it's still going to have a little bit of a literati ish feel we still want to i think we still want to build the foliage up on it maybe it's a little yeah. bit more though um and i think let's get the apex if you're thinking about the balance of the tree right obviously this section here is a little bit straight there's not a massive amount we can do about that I mean, you can split live veins away from the dead wood, but I don't really think that's going to benefit it any. I think picking the right front for this tree is pretty critical because if it's that way on, you lose that little bit of movement yeah, there. Yeah, just that little bit more. Exactly, yeah. So I think if we just tilt it around a little bit, uh, that also takes a bit of that straightness away on yeah. there. It's always going to have a little bit of that, but the length's gone. Yeah. Right? So if we take it around here, that gives the illusion that that's shorter. And then you've got that lovely movement with a live vein and the dead wood coming out of here. You can see this bit of dead wood coming back here and this little bit coming towards you. Nice bit of movement coming up here. And then you can still see you've got that negative space in that section there, which is important for that follow on. So I think the front of the tree is kind of a roundabout in here. Now, whether or not the tree is tipped up any, um, let's have a little look and see. It is, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of roots on this and a lot of roots on that, so right, we might uh, be able to bury that a little well, bit. Maybe be able to bury that, but the trouble is, is if we lift that up like that, that hides that nice gap there right. unless we lift it up and tip it towards a little bit so we could do a little bit of that right now um where the foliage is concerned first thing to do as i say is clean out the stuff that's not really doing anything for the tree it's that's the same as any kind of juniper um so the the stuff that's not got any particular nice grown tips on the ends just remove that it'll make it easier to wire as well so all of this lot in here if it doesn't want to come off easy 
you know there's a bit of um tension there on the on the don't pull it use scissors because you'll rip the bark um and that might make the, the the bit dry out but continue right along into these these sections here where it's lignified right so the, then because what you're going to need to put wire on all of them right, right. because we're going to need to lift and spread all of that out to the light to maximize on the amount of foliage that's there to get it as, as good as we possibly can and you can even just see from that little droopy bit of foliage if you just spread that out yeah. you've got a rather a, quite a large mass of foliage yeah. there so will that have to stay permanently wired because it is it is quite um, a floppy little branch there are it? a bit there are a little bit like spruce these where spruce um just for the sake of argument if you think about where they're from, and the same with these, if you think about where they're from, they're from high up in the mountains, the, 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 generally they'll grow sideways rather than up. Um, and obviously snow lands on them. Um, and the th thing is with the likes of spruce, um, they have to have evolved to have branches that are very flexible. So when there's a weight of snow on them, do you know what I mean? But the, that works for the tree um, as in it, it stops branches um, breaking quite so much but it doesn't work for us quite as well in the old bonsai context because it generally means is you we wire a branch and set it into position and we could leave the wire on for a long time come to take the wire off and boy I mean yeah. it's because it's evolved that way you know so it's always a case of wire, unwire, wire, unwire, wire, un unwire, and it's just it's it is just one of them things. So, um, so we'll get it, get it thinned, get the uh, rubbish. It's not doing anything for the tree. Obviously, we're going to be careful with how much in the way of um, good foliage in the end that we're going to take out, because uh, we'll want the good growing tips on the end. Uh, get the wire on it and then we'll get a nice style put in that we'll try and utilize because we've got this straight section here right yeah which does, does catch your eye a little yeah. bit right but we'll, if we can we'll try and pull around some foliage it just pops over there and there and just takes your eye off the straightness because it's very important as a bonsai artist to identify the the, um, the good the good aspects of a tree and the flaws or the bad aspects of a tree and every tree will have them especially Yamadori and often you you can't say well there's a straight bit let's cut it off yeah that's the tree gone um, everything's up here so you can't do that so you have to think and go right how can I hide it you know, can you tip it a certain way? Can you tilt it round and have a bit, another bit of dead wood blocking it out? Or can you have foliage that's blocking it out? So I think that's what we're going to kind of do with that. Um, and I think, yeah, the front for, for me is kind of in yeah. here. Um, follow this lovely line. And obviously we'll start to form an apex in here, but don't remove them. Right. Um, because again, just like a chinensis when you want to kind of rebuild some of the areas you do need to keep some crotch growth so that when um, you, it starts to get too wide you take off some of the under foliage and if it's really wide or it's a piece of raw material well then um, what you would do say with some of these bits here you would get lots of vigour in that get a good amount of foliage new happy green tipped foliage and that and then the weaker stuff around about you would prune off right. and that takes over um right so you know what you're doing with that yeah again sabina another sabina <coughs> there is um different foliage pads um sorry not foliage pads uh, foliage types in sabina right some are a bit more kind of bit leggy and some of them are a little bit more compact and this is quite a nice compact one 
We won't know about that one just as of yet. It seems pretty good at present, right. but there is some that are just quite leggy. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, I can remember this tree. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, is the one the pigeons keep trying to reach out for me. Other oh, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, yes, it needs to be moved on to the next level now, right? So, uh, the pigeons haven't made such a good job on the restyle of it. <laughs> so I think we need to just put a little bit more definition in the foliage pads again. Yeah. And also these extensions areas, right, we need to kind of start to cut some of them back, push back some of the foliage. Taking out, you see you've got some weak bits in there that aren't really doing anything for the tree. Just you know it's pointless keeping them the chances are they're not going to do anything um so some of this lot here we need to kind of lift and start to get some nice foliage pads um there's good tips on the end there so some of this stuff that's hanging down we can remove some of that um and again some of the stuff down here because again it's it's good for the tree to have all of them grown tips pointing to the light. So some of this lot here, you can see it's just starting to kind of drop off anyway. Yeah. So that little bit there. Oh, it's just a spider. Oh, a nice bit spider there. It's not it's one of them amazing. ones from Australia. So, um, <coughs> so yeah, you can see where there's certain areas that are not quite as happy. It's just got old and a bit leggy. So we just need to see that one. I've just pushed that down like that because that one's, I think, really got to come off. And then tip all of this up to the light and start to form some nice foliage pads again. Right. And I think this is generally what we're going to be doing with this tree today. The wire on it is okay. It's not, I mean, have a little um, look about it. And if there's any bits biting in, just take that section off. Yeah. So, and literally it's just going to be a case of just getting a bit of shape back into the tree. That bit there will probably come off as well. And we'll start to form some foliage pads. So you've got a little bit of definition in there when some of this lot is being pulled off. And you may need to add some extra bits of wire um, just to the lengths of these bits here. When I generally put a bit of wire on, I'll, I'll put a little loop on the end. And one of the reasons is sometimes you can add and twist it on up it a bit, little bit more, just so you can... This one's not really... And then you can have a bit more control in that foliage pad. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, again, that one there isn't really kind of doing very much for the tree. It's Again, it's important to identify these kind of weak and strong areas. And any weak areas, get rid of them. Um, they're not doing anything for the tree. They're just kind of cluttering things up. So that you, the stuff that's on the tree is, is benefiting the tree. Mm -hmm. And obviously this lower branch here is a little bit weaker because obviously sap wants to rise so um, it may be a case of when the tree's in the garden every now and again stick a chock under there tip the tree up a little bit so it gets a bit more light and the sap goes to that a little bit more try a bit of foliar feeding on it a bit um, that'll help it along a smidge um, and uh, but everywhere else on the tree, see Sam, this turn to the moves. <laughs> but everywhere else on the tree, it's looking really healthy. It's just there's one or two areas, it just needs a bit of a kick. Um, and it's mainly these lower areas, which is fairly typical um, of a lot of trees. Most trees are apical dominant and, you know, they put all their energy up there. Um, so yeah, let's get some definition in the foliage pads again. So first job for you to do today is these weak areas just start to thin out, get the, um, some of them taken out 
and then we'll start to set the... What about the likes of this? Where it's like, I mean, the foliage, it's getting foliage on the tip, new, uh -huh. new foliage on yeah. the tips, which is quite grey and... I know, well, you see, the thing with something like that, if you drop it down, can you just, can you just see how, when it's dropped, even the tips on the end are dropping down. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why getting stuff up to the light is important. So putting a little bit extra wire on the end of that, a little bit fine, finer wire on that. Um, if it is required in the grand scheme of things, um, some, some of the stuff on the outside can be moved. Also one of the reasons these little loops are quite good um, is if you have got, and you're doing a little bit of initial styling, if you have got a floppy bit of foliage like that and you can't possibly put fine wire on that bit there, that bit there, that bit, that's just over wiring. Yeah. If you put a quite a, a, a bit of a loop on the end and then tip it up and that loop helps lift that and that's going to get a bit of strength in there because it's, oh, it's pointing it up to the light. See, it's trying. You can see there is yeah, tips yeah, on there, but cool. if that, if we get, a, if you put an extra little bit of wire on that and uh, take it down as far as where I've got the loop on it already, and then I'll kind of show you and we'll put like a larger loop on because you don't want to take fine wire up like you're just going to break it. And we'll just put a biggish loop on the end and we'll just lift that up to the light. Right. Excellent. So this is a really nice juniper of uh, Jimmy's. Um, it's just in for a little bit of a tweak. Now, we're, we're all a little bit uncertain of the variety. Um, now, I know Jimmy was mentioned before about um, doing a little bit of grafting on it, but to be honest, I think it's best if it's just left the variety that it is, because it's a big tree, it works and he's really, really do done well to get this species of, uh, of juniper um, working well for this tree. And if it was grafted with Ichigawa, it would, st it would still make a really good tree, but it makes a superb tree well um, br brought out. The horticultural um, expertise of Jimmy here is really showing on a tree like this because it isn't Ichigawa it's a it's a it's a variety that's slightly hard at the handle and he's really really brought the best out of the tree so a few little things that were mentioned about the tree before was it's got masses of berries on I would take them off they're still green tune up berries turn black when they're ripe so they're still going to be taking a bit of energy from the tree nothing too much it's already going to have put a heck of a lot of energy into doing that um if you do like the berries by all means leave a few on but um if you don't i would pick some of them off i think also it, you need to go through the tree and exactly what steve's doing with his sabina there just taking out any of the um foliage from the underside anything that's um a little bit cluttered you see if you if you kind of do this to the foliage and you've got a, a a mass of foliage that just kind of folds back on itself you see how that does that when it goes back together again some of the stuff in here which isn't getting any light just take that out you know and then you can maybe, when there's some good quality crotch growth with tips are looking good on it, that can replace some of the other stuff um, at a later date. So, um, but the tree is looking fab. One of the other things that we talked about with this tree is this, the foliage pads are fantastic. Um, again, just a bit of thinning. The, 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 the form of the tree is really nice. The actual apex of a tree like this is pretty much spot on. But we mentioned before, just be aware that when you do the apex, it doesn't look like what, what I call the green helmet on the top. So you can see how you've got the apex there and you can see a gap right the way through on all sides. So it looks like another tree has just been plonked on the top. It's always a good idea 
yes you want negative spaces but try to blend one side of it have a little bit of asymmetry in the apex as well and if we drop down a few little aspects so the workings in there is not quite as visible do you see what i mean so some of this lot and it's it's been wired so i can just tweak a little few bits about and so some of this lot is going to sit in here and you can you see how with it blending in we need to do like more tweaking here it's blending in on this side a little bit more and it's looking less like the green helmet i agree that it needs a little bit of space here some of that if we'll just bend that out a little bit right so they've got a nice rolling effect do you see how that is it blends in a lot more the apex is still nicely over the nabari the balance is good um, and we just need to pull down one or two bits in the back as well the apex still needs to be part of the tree it hasn't got to be a separate entity um, you want asymmetry in the tree and you've got great asymmetry in this you've got the some asymmetry doing that so your lower branches down here your counterbalance branches up here but you also want asymmetry in the apex so that's why it's blended in with this and there's a little bit more asymmetry in that as it's kind of linked in with this right so it just wants one or two little areas just blending out a little bit and remember he's got some great foliage pads here the idea of building a foliage pad is you have a c shaped foliage pad like so flat bottom with a nice bit of volume on the top with everything up to the light right one or two little bits in here that are getting a wee bit weak because of the overhang of this one you could actually take some of them out a little bit and also the branches you should be able to see this section you know these sections of branch you don't want too much foliage actually attached to that so brilliant foliage pads just to neaten it up a little bit more just go along and just take off some of the stuff that's pointing down because one of the things with junipers is um they're just you don't notice it but you just they just get wider and wider and wider um, so to, to, to tackle that, what you would do is you would go along and you see where the edge of the foliage pad is there, you will eventually take away, do you see what I mean, these bottom sections along here and that just pushes it in a little bit, right? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so the jobs for you today, Jimmy, are berries off. Right, although that kind of thing you could do at home, it's not kind of a, really a, 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 an imminent job here, but there's a lot on in places. Blend the apex in a little bit more, um, on, particularly on this side. I think this side's fine here with this gap, but just try to blend them bits in a little bit more so that you can't see that bit in there. It just blends nicely and the roll of everything, negative spaces are nice and neat maybe take some of the um some of the bottom section of this foliage pad away because the gap from there to onto this foliage pad is maybe a wee bit big and the same with this one so take some of that bottom foliage away and that'll make that foliage pad a little bit narrower and then the same on that one uh, and i think generally that will just neaten it up some of the some of the foliage in there it's not getting the light so much and it's a little bit weak you could take a bit of that away but on the whole this is br brilliant brilliant tree when you stand back and you look at that uh -huh. second branch under the apex there when you stand this back in, yeah would you take that fit in further so it's sort of like blending in with the, yeah, the so crown yeah good point there is 
like say do you say if i push that lot down there yeah <clears throat> that would actually be a little bit better and also you could actually just drop the branch down a smidge right right ever so slightly but what you'd have to watch is if you pull the branch down a little bit you're then going to be making a space here so you'd, you'd then also have to pull down some of this right but what you don't want is kind of shelves yeah you kind of want more of a rolling kind of effect but it's 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 a great tree and it just needs to um we can just take it that one step further but can you see that the green helmet is now just it's started to disappear a little bit yeah uh, so so well done jimmy for working a tree that's not that easy to um to manage we had a little chat about this this before and i don't know the history of this tree um a little bit of the history of this tree anyway because um, I know it did belong to Len Gilbert, good old Len, I haven't seen Len for a long time. And I, if you're listening, Len, I hope you're okay. Um, so, and I think then it belonged to uh, Tony Southern. Now this tree originated, as far as my mind recollect, it came from Lodders in Holland. Um, so what needs to be done with the tree? Um, it needs a good clean out, right? So. Um, there's a lot of this foliage in here. You can just see if you just do that, it's just dropping stuff. Um, and that's fine. There's nothing particularly wrong with the tree at all. It's just a lot of old foliage that needs um, taken out and it'll do the tree the world of good. There's probably some monsters in here actually. But, um, and then we need, what we do need to do because it's kind of grown quite wide and these extensions have got really quite long. We're gonna to have to be careful with what we take off, right? Because we don't wanna take off too much of this nice green tips on the end. And that's how you kind of, you know that this tree's happy. It's just, it's getting too wide. We need to push it back. So the job of this tree today uh, and um, what you're going to be doing today is you're going to be cleaning out all of this in here anywhere anything that's yellow which is just the old foliage and but because it's grown um, and it hasn't been kept compact um, it's all getting a little bit leggy there is some wire in there that's probably been on for quite a long time probably when Tony had the tree I'm presuming um, and some of that... That's probably when I first worked it. Yeah. Um, after it came from Tony's. Ah, oh, right. There's some wire biting in there that needs to come off. Um, and we'll start to think about pruning these back. Right. So we're probably not going to take them back too far. Because if you look at this branch here in particular, right, if we, if we think... If you look at the style of the tree, because some of this lot needs to be shaved back. And for the line of the tree to go up, this needs to be cut back almost to there. But that's too much for this branch, right? Because if you think about it, all the good growing tips are here. And the stuff that's a bit weaker is there. And if we come in and cut that there, we are pruning it back to hardly any growing tips and the chances are that branch will die off, right? So we're going to have to do it in stages. We'll have to cut out back here, get some vigour and some growing tips growing well there, and then take it back a little bit further, right? Now, if there was any really good crotch growth in there, we could have cut it back to that. And this is one of the reasons why don't always automatically remove crotch growth because this tree is a prime example of if you just if you leave the crotch growth and it gets very very healthy and you get bits like this growing in there you can then start move stuff back quite considerably and this will take over and it'll be a lot more compact so it's it's a tree that um just needs a lot of tidying up there's nothing wrong with it in the context health wise 
it just needs we just need to push it back so um what what's your feeding regime of this tree do you feed it very much um i've been feeding it on uh, the, uh, the liquid seaweed and uh, low npk right so and how often um, do you feed um, probably every two weeks, I would say. Right. It might be a case to up your game a little bit. Um, or it should I, be a little bit greener. Um, the, the, if you look at the ends, the greenness is fine. It's, um, we just we'll want to push it to start to back bud, right? If you're going to do anything <coughs> major with a tree, if you're going to prune hard a pine or, 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 or anything, you need to feed it and get the energy built up in the tree before you do anything with it if you if it's not fed well if it's just ticking over and you get in there and cut 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 you're going to do more damage to the tree so what i would say is just um feed it well so say once a week with fish emulsion and seaweed because it's a nice gentle fertilizer maybe pop on the top a bit of a bit of um, green dream fertilizer, a bit of bio gold. Um, bio gold can be a bit um, funny in the UK because it doesn't um, break down quite as well as we want it to. So sometimes it's a good idea to dissolve it in some water, about three, two or three pellets in a litre of water and, and just water it on and that gives it a little bit extra. Uh, and it's, it, it's kind of almost instant. Um, so first job with this is to go through it and I mean go through it with a fine tooth comb and every single little bit of dead or yellowing foliage in there. And there's, as I say, there's nothing particularly wrong with a tree. All the tree's doing is it's growing, right? Trees want to get big. They don't know they're a bonsai. They think, right, I need to be tall and get the light as fast as possible. So it's throwing out all of these extensions all over the place. We need to come in there and carefully and we need to pull it back so we get more compact, nice, healthy growth. Um, and by doing that, we need to get in and thin out any of the dead, yellow one. Don't take any of these grown tips off uh, at all. But if there's any weak areas a little bit further back, where the, even, if it's, uh, even if it's got a greenish look to it, but it's not doing anything for the tree. I'm just having a look to see. You see like those bits there, you see you've got that stem there. These bits here, they might be green, but they're not doing anything for the tree so they can be dispensed with. And eventually when you've cleared the whole tree out and got rid of any of the stuff that's not gonna do anything for the tree, it's then gonna start to put out crotch growth that's nice and healthy that we can use for the tree's benefit to pull things back later on. Um, but that, that's, it's a good tree um, and it's definitely worth, worth um, persevering with. Right? You happy with that? Any Thank questions? You. No, I think right. I'm uh, good with that kind but, of thing. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, so, so clean out um, and take the wire off. I would take, I would take so all of them. So it's long leggy growth at the back after these uh, strong growing tips. Yeah, we, we, we will a bit later on today, once you've got it kind of cleaned out or the bulk of it cleaned out, we will take and encourage it to push it back a little bit. But what I don't want to happen is um, I don't want it to take too much off that it starts to produce masses of juvenile foliage. It's already started to produce a little bit in here where it's probably just lacking light. Um, and because you want, the, you want the best for the tree and the, the, the best foliage for the tree is obviously is this nice green um, scale foliage. The tree's healthy. I mean, if you look at this growing at the ends, the tree's healthy, we just need to push it back. Every now and again, stick it in a bucket or a, well, it's going to need more than a bucket because you need a big tree or something like that, a water basin or something, and just put the whole tree in up to, up to here and I would just leave it in for half an hour or so just so that this section in here gets absolutely nicely wet because there is roots in that that the tree needs. Um, so I would just, just make sure that that doesn't be dry for too long. Juniper's, yes, they do like a bit of dry, but 
within reason, right? Um, but the trees help. It is healthy. I, I do keep it a bit on the, the drier side. Well, you don't want to keep them on the dry side. You see, there's a there's a bit of a misnomer with keeping things on the dry side. You let the tree dry a little bit. And then when it when you want to water it, you thoroughly drench it. Right? That's not keeping it on the dry side. Keeping it on the dry side. My interpretation of that would be you would just give it a little bit of water and um you know you keep it f fairly dry all the time. Yeah, if I do see this thing uh, starting to dry out uh -huh. on the top. Yeah. The morning, I generally water. Yeah, when you water it, you water it and you absolutely drench it. Hose pipe over the top of it, water gushing out the bottom of the pot. Because on a growing medium like this, one of the mega important things is when you water it and the water drains through quickly, it pulls air through. Yeah. It must pull air through because the roots need oxygen almost as much as water, right? So, when you water it, water it well, and you will notice a marked difference in... Um, nothing particularly likes to be too dry for too long. I mean, again, I've had a few people say to us, um, pines, oh, I keep them on the dry side. You don't keep them on the dry side you just let them get a little bit dry between waterings and then when you want to water it you water it well absolutely soak it and then you don't do that again until it's getting a bit dry right the same with conifers 70 percent dry before you water it and then soak it and then leave it again until it's about 70 percent dry and then water it do you get what i mean Right. Right. Okay. So really, it's a case of you feel that growing medium in there. Don't always just go by the eye. Feel the growing medium. Mm -hmm. say like if you can feel a good amount of damp there, don't water it. But if there's if it's dry, like you mentioned, if it's quite dry, give it a good soak. Right. And if and if if you start to see this section here particularly getting rather dry, dunk it and leave it for half an hour, take it out, let it drain, and then don't do that again for possibly a, a, a week. Depends on the weather, because these can dry out really quite quickly in hours, if you happen to get like a kind of a warm, a really warm spell, you know. I mean, some of my junipers at home, I'm obviously away all day to day, so what I do to keep the pot cool, because right, it's important that these pots don't get hot because it'll kill the roots that are touching the pot on the inside and also to keep the moisture in because I'm not there to check and I check the water in my trees every two hours when I'm at home I know not everybody can do that but every two hours I'll go around and I won't water them all I don't blanket water everything because not everything will want a drink at that stage so I might do three will want a drink and then I'll go and check another couple of hours later and another four different ones will want a drink so then I'll water them and they're thoroughly soaked with a hose pipe and at the minute because I'm away after I watered them this morning I put soaking wet towels over the tops of the pots to keep the moisture in and if the sun does happen to come out ha ha you north of England um, the pots stay cool and they're not going to dry out too quickly uh, and I'm not there to water them. Yes. A tree will have more damage done to it if it gets too dry for too long than if in a growing medium like this it's too wet for too long. But I will say you don't want to have it sitting wet for too long as well because consequently that has issues for the tree as well, especially pines and junipers. Um, so, uh, and, and obviously we have had some really quite wet weather. So they have enjoyed having a lot of rain and then drying out a bit between waterings. And then rain or watering and then drying out between waterings because that pulls the oxygen through and it helps keep the roots nice and healthy. Right? Mm -hmm. You happy with that? Yes. Um, placement wise, full sun? Yeah, now. Or part? Oh. What I would say though, um, it's a bit of a funny one this one because 
Junibas, pines do like full sun. In the UK, the sun comes out quite rarely <laughs> um, and it's normally cloudy and a bit dull and all the rest of it. But the lux levels are still quite high and that's quite good. One of the things I would say though is um, that you give them as much sun as you can, but if there is a lot of heat in that sun, and just a, a little bit ago, we yeah. did have a couple of days where it was hot. And depending on people's gardens, because um, my back garden is a sun trap, and I did put a thermometer out in the morning in a certain part of the garden, and it was about 22 degrees when I put the, the thermometer out. And that's not bad, that's quite nice. But I popped it next to a pot where I had a um, Taxus cuspidata, and I stood and I watched the thermometer, and it went up and up and up it, like that. It, but there wasn't like big gaps in between. You just saw it go up and up and up and up, and it got to 42 degrees. That's too much. It's too much, right? Now it was only like that for a short stint. But the pots were getting hot, really, really hot, right? So be careful. They do like the sun. They do like, um, you know, basking in the sun a little bit. But you'll notice with junipers in particular, if they're in too much sun for too long, they go like a yellowy colour. They kind of protect themselves a little bit and they'll go like a yellowy colour. So I find you get a better green colour on them if you can just protect them from the worst of any heat. And it's the heat that's the issue, not the sun, the heat. If you have a day in the garden where it's just nice and sunny, but it's not too hot, it'll be fine, it'll love it. But if the temperature starts to go up and up and up, it might be a good idea just to pop it in the shade for a little bit. So that the, so that the color of your foliage, your tree's not struggling, it's not drying out too much. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Google in the yellow, that's, what, that's the one you were on about. That's a tanuki. Right, so we've got another nice juniper here. This looks a bit like blows. Um, I'm not sure what, what variety it, are you led to believe that it is? Uh, not a clue. Not a clue juniper. I bought it off a club member uh, with Jimmy's advice. I, th I think this is the third growing season I've had. Right, so. Uh, I've not done a great deal at it. We've uh -huh. repotted it this spring. Right, okay. I'm feeding it on chicken poo, and once uh, once a month it gets dumped for an hour. Um, right. You can see it's, it's responded, it's put on it's a lot of weight. You could probably up your game with a fertiliser. Okay. Um, well, there's normally four bags on there, but I've got squirrels in the garden, and, and this is what Oh, they're oh yeah, they're little oh. buggers. Um, but, uh, right, so it's got nice bit movement in it. It's, it's got a bit of a, the, the green helmet going on on the top. It has, and right. that's my problem, because everything seems to be going, going out. Uh -huh. it, 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 it's expanding width-wise, right. and, and now I'm thinking, wait a minute, how do we get it all coming back in again right. to be a bit more Well, compact. you know what I mentioned about Jimmy's Absolutely. juniper, yeah. when you start to take stuff off? Yeah. But the thing is, what we need to do is we need to build some of the foliage mass up on this in places. Yeah. We need to balance the growth out. It's quite dense in places at the top, but yeah. it's flat, yeah. right? We need to lift that up a little bit, okay. so we've got a bit more of a dome in the top, yeah. then we need to drop some of these areas so that again it's not got that kind of um, green helmet type of thing going on so also these branches going up like that they're what I call the claw yes you want a more relaxed claw right rather than it like that you need a bit more like that right so they kind of want to be a little bit just a little bit more relaxed like so right and then this is this is uh, even, evening sun on this side and morning sun on yeah. the other yeah i mean if the tree's up against a wall or a fence or whatever turn it yeah. right it, it's not uh it, it's out it's, it lives underneath the tree a big holly tree but um right it gets uh, it gets morning sun uh -huh. over there to your right, right. And, uh, evening sun on the uh -huh. afternoon Right, so what I think we need to do with this, right, this branch here wants lifting ever so slightly. Yeah. This 
wants lifting, it wants to be pulled up into here. Okay. So there's definitely more asymmetry going on. Yeah. As I say, some of these need to be declawed a little bit. Yeah. Um, some of it, I can imagine, you, you nearly always squish things up in the car a little bit yeah, when, you, yeah. when you're bringing stuff over. Right, now there is some wire on there that looks like it's been on a while. Yes. You may need to take some of them bits off and rewire them. It'll be fine to do that, yeah. right? Um, obviously, if there's any wire scars on there, try to make sure that the wire that you put on again goes in the opposite direction. Yeah. Or if it, you can't help it because of how the other wire is on, because yeah. you don't want to be crossing, just at least try to get the wire going in between yeah. where, if there's any wire scars on, yeah. right? Um, and then, as I say, we'll push this down, we'll raise some of that up. Because right? <coughs> some of the negative spaces are a wee bit big. If you look at the slope on that foliage pad, yeah. it's different to the slope on that one and yeah. on that one. Yeah. That's why we need to lift that up ever so slightly. Yeah. And we'll need to lift That's and slightly. spread yeah. all of that up. When you're forming a foliage pad, yeah. if you, you think about, right, you've got the branch coming down here, and you've got this branch, which is one of your, bit, what I call your base um, branches for a foliage pad. Base branch, the, so it's the bigger ones, base yeah. branches. They make the, the base of the foliage pad, yeah. right? And they'll have foliage on the ends, right? Yeah. Anything shorter or sitting on the top here needs to go in, and they are what you call fillers. Yeah. So that may forms the volume to the foliage pad, yeah. right? No, all of these look look like they're wanting to grow. Oh, they're, they're, so I'm, they're I'm great. Reading. They've got yeah. grown tips on. Yeah. They just need, you know, to get Sorry. up to the light a little bit more. Yeah. Right. See that one there? We can spread that one out just a little bit. Remember, space and light's important. Yes. So each little bit, it's got it all. Looking terribly well, is it? Trying. trying so just okay. and i mean with a tree sparse of foliage any green is good green yeah right um but you can see it's got some nice growth coming in on there that yeah. it's want it's wanting to to What's produce doing? nice um so i'm just lifting that up always just keep taking things back to the front and having a look whenever you do much in the way of moving things and then a turn -turn and remember you're wanting to start to form a C shaped pad. Yeah. Right? Don't make it too open. So because remember it's it's an image, it must look good all the way around, not just from the front. Yeah. Right? So it these sections of branch here need to be clear of foliage, yeah, right? Yeah. But if, and I'm just going to move this out of the way just ever so slightly, just to show you. But if they weren't there, and you feel your eye followed the line of that branch right the way down there, it would be too open, right? Yeah. That there's nothing there. So it was good to keep that. These are the fillers that drop in there. Yeah. Right, and then as I say, it's important stuff is pointing up to the light as best as you can. I know the fo foliage on these junipers can be a little bit unruly, but they will tighten up over time. Right, right. Because this this one's very loose, isn't it? Relative to an Itogawa or something like that. Well, it's a chinensis. So this will um, tighten up. I mean, that's, that looks not, nice up there, doesn't yeah. it? It's tighter. It's it'll not be as tight as a Itogawa. No. Um, it's not. It's just. It just won't. It, um, is this is this a, a, a reflection of, of how much light this is getting relative to how much? That yeah, the thing, the things get that. kind of a bit spindly and a bit sparse. Yeah. Um, What's that? Oh, it's a harlequin ladybird. Right, right. Right. I find, I find. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. So, yeah, we just need to kind of just get a little bit more definition in some of the foliage pads, just taking off some of the little dead bits there. Um, you know, and I think, but I think the main issue with this tree is to declaw it 
So yeah. you spread the foliage out so it's going to get maximum light. Yeah. And, in, and that, as you say, consequently, it'll give it a bit more kind of tight, tightness. Yeah. And the apex definitely needs sorting. Yeah. It's a little bit open and it's a little bit flat. You don't want it too flat, right? Okay. You want a bit more of a dome on the top. So, on this front yeah. section here, or a bit further back well, in the middle. Well, both. Right, the okay. whole, the whole thing wants to be to be domed right, a little okay. bit more, right? There is room for that up here. Yeah. There is, and also you see these ones branches here. Yeah. If you put some heavier wire on that, or use a guy wire, right. that can be pulled down yeah. because your your gaps in between the foliage pads, right? Um, they're bigger. Yeah. From here to here in the bottom. And as you go up the tree they get a bit smaller. Right? Yeah. Until you get to the apex where it starts to blend in, a bit like what we did with Jimmy's there. Yeah. And also remember what well, after a triangle. Yes. This is just loose, the can triangle can kind of go in a little bit. Well the whole but, thing looks very rounded, doesn't it? Well and, it's, and there's no triangle. Well you there. don't well the triangle I see it use the word triangle. It, it it doesn't want to have a pointy top, right? Right. A pointy top is a sign of, of immaturity. Okay. Right. It's a young tree. Yeah. So you still want a domed top, but it still takes on a triangle, yeah. and it's for health wise as well as aesthetics. Obviously, the lower branches need to come out to the light a bit more, and then they'll come in. Yeah. The next ones up, and they come in, and then obviously a nice domed top to show sign of a, of a mature tree, which is what we're trying to achieve, right? So, um, and then, although we've got that outer triangle, yeah. you need an inner triangle, yeah. right? And the inner triangle would be, so this branch here would kind of be moved out of the way a little bit. It's just a little bit too far over that way. Yeah. And then when this one is moved up, and some of this is moved over because it's a bit bare in there. Yeah. You get a, a triangle going like that. Yeah. So you have a focal point in here. Yeah. And you need to pull this down to kind of stop the apex from looking quite so open. Right. So we're going to be pulling a lot of that down. Yeah. We're going to be lifting that up. Yeah. We're going to be moving that over. Yeah. Spreading some of this out because yeah. that's too open there. That's going out that way slightly. It needs to just come up just yeah. ever so slightly like yeah. that. So yeah. you could get that with a guy wire, yeah. just lifting it up, maybe it's to that chain there, yeah. right? Um, and as I say, we just need to um, rejig a few of the branches so that it's um, health of the tree, all the greenery is maximising its light potential as much as it possibly can. Right, okay. right. Right. Very good. So that's that kind of stuff. I think um, you would you would get rid of that because you've got the bulk of your good established branches on the end. It's you only want to let crotch growth kind of come away um, and start to get established if the whole of this lot is starting to get too long or it's it's a tree that's still in development and you need to push the growth back. You need to get all of this lot in here nice and vigorous. When it's nice and vigorous, got good growing tips on it, you would then come in and start to cut out some of these long leggy branches on raw material. Or if this is all starting to get too long, you will then start to peel away some of the stuff along the bottom there and push everything. And then eventually some of this lot in here is going to take over as your fillers. Yeah. So um, but that's, it's not getting any light anyway. Well, it? that's not getting any light, but you've got good established growth yeah. here if anything you want to be taking away some of this bottom stuff right it's getting too long yeah okay. um and that's going to keep everything dense and compact here yeah. and some of this lot when it gets wired it'll pull down and fill in that kind of gap so you've got that roll yeah. roll as it goes up the tree uh -huh. right Thank you. I just think these need a little bit of white, but I'm just doing... Oh, that's looking a lot neater. Yeah. Just, a, just, yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. You just, it's just bringing some of them, them little bits at the end there. It, it Literally, it's not much, no, but, it's the, just, but the devil's in the detail. Yeah, just just, just literally it. just whipping them down there like that and making just nice foliage pad thinned out in there. That is definitely better on that side. That roll up there is far better. You can see this a lot better, 
you know, it's more of a focal point there. Yeah. Um, now it's all these back ones. Yeah. They all need to be taken yeah. back. So no cracking job, yeah. I mean, again, yeah, you can take some of these bits off on the ends. Just to push it back down Just to push bit. it, push it back, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and even one or two bits on this side as yeah. well, because obviously... It's almost straight there, isn't it? It is, yeah. we've got from there, it goes in, mm. it comes out a little bit, and then they're all on the same sort of plane, yeah. aren't they? But, yeah. um, so some of this lot here, don't take nothing more off that. No. Uh, but that end, some of that end stuff there could do with coming off, and a little bit on there, and not so much this side, but a little bit on the back of that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I think. When you look, you can see it's like protruding past. Uh huh. Like yeah. You say, that, that should yeah. be disappearing as it goes around there, exactly. but it isn't. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. There's too much of a jump yeah. from there to there. Do you know what I yeah. mean? It kind of wants a little bit shaved off that. And even this branch here, it's, it's not the strongest, but if you can encourage it just to grow out a little bit there, yeah. so there's a roll from that to that and then up to the apex a little bit. But you obviously you still want that bit of negative space through there. Kind of, you're going to kick up the backside, start to move a little bit by just nicking some of the edge out, but instead we've just got these blank areas. You know, you read books and like it's a damn bad one he's written about cattle tree. It's all complicated. Even me. Between there. Ah, yeah. Did you see what's starting to lift some stuff up? Yeah, yeah. And it's starting to add a little bit of volume in there. Yeah. Again, it comes off the same branch, but is it the same path? Right, well, now we're getting to the top of the tree. Yeah. You start, need, need to start blending things into one another a little bit more. Right. We don't, you don't want too many itty-bitty itty kind of little foliage pads. Right. The foliage pads do get smaller yeah. as you go at the top. Yeah. But you need to kind of blend them in a little bit, right? Oh, so, well, that's um, good point. Suddenly, I thought what was a really thick top apex is looking a bit thin, actually. Uh, be all right when we get there, man. Have a bit of faith. <laughs> Less well, of those know, negative well, waves. Well, you know what those quotes are like. We're always worried about losing our top. You know, top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying no. It looks, it's looking that way because it's quite a big um, part of the tree.
Because you want these step ups from there to a four inch part there, and then into the apex, and then down that side. But that looks better, doesn't it? Now, yeah. yeah. And you see here, we can maybe drop down, so you've got a slope going up there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.